does opera need to be politically correct? October 2016, Jewish activists are laying on the ground in front of the Metropolitan Opera, demonstrating their opposition to the death of Klinghoffer, John Adams' opera they are accusing of anti-Semitism. 2014, in London and Paris, African activists are actively demonstrating against Exhibit B, a theatrical installation by Brett Bailey based on the first genocides committed by Europeans in Africa at the beginning of last century. A South African artist, white stage director engaged in the fight against apartheid, Bailey is accused of cultural appropriation and humiliation towards African actors in his show. A few years before, this production had been seen in Avignon, Brussels, and more European cities, and had been very well received by anti-racist activists. Today in the US, more and more opera intendants are hesitating to produce Butterfly because of its colonialistic background, or Turandot because of the cliches of Chinese people, such as Ping Pang Pong. This kind of demonstration and question about political correctness in the field of opera is very new. It never took place during the last century. So what happened in between? I see two main reasons. First one, during the 20th century, opera has been mainly regarded as a sort of entertainment. People came for the voices, the orchestra, set and costumes, but they were not really interested in the meaning of the opera and its dramaturgical content. Second reason, Me Too movement, anti-racism and decolonial movements are becoming more and more visible and efficient. Activists pay more and more attention to the content of films, books, exhibition, theater and opera productions. I regard these evolutions as positive. To consider opera as much more than pure entertainment is a good thing. And I have sympathy for these movements that are necessary to make our world change in a more human direction. But it has also consequences. What about freedom of expression? If some radical activists can impeach a production to be presented, and what will be the future of our artistic heritage if it doesn't fit with the expectations of today's citizens? Those questions are more complicated than we could think. And I suggest starting my reflection with a look at the history of opera. During the 20th century, opera became step-by-step step an art form of the past. New operas became less and less frequent and the grand repertoire from the 19th century became dominant. During those years, the interest in text, dramaturgy, and staging was poor. Music lovers didn't care, didn't care really about the signification of opera, and they were probably unaware of the ideological impact of many works. Cartoonist Hergé had done a very good choice in selecting Marguerite's aria, Ah, je ris de me voir si belle en ce miroir. Ah, I love to see myself so beautiful in this mirror. As the favorite area of La Castafiore. But that was also a metaphor of the evolution of opera in the middle of the 20th century. An art form that was losing its significance and necessity, closed on itself and full of self-admiration. Had it been like this for centuries? Not sure. During the Renaissance, art and music played a very important role in bringing a new focus on the human being, on the individual. During the 18th century, many composers, including Gluck and Mozart, played a crucial role in promoting the values that prepared the way to the French Revolution. In the 19th century, Verdi was regarded as a giant artist and as a symbol of the reunification of Italy. In Germany, Wagner's opera were also associated with nationalism. They were later on used by the Nazis regime and associated to the catastrophe of the Second World War and the Holocaust. 
Yes, opera can be a support of ideology in a conscious or unconscious way. During the 20th century, many composers wrote operas on contemporary subjects. Wozzeck, Martin der Mahler, Mahagony, Peter Grimes, many works by Hanze, Nono, Adams, and many more composers refer to aspirations of our time. But the audience remained globally the same. Still today, the opera audience almost never represents the social and cultural diversity present in our cities. Can we then be surprised if some clashes occur between the aspirations of many people and our operatic institutions? Let's come back to the case of Richard Wagner. Personally, I love his music and he's surely one of the biggest geniuses of Western music. But I can't forget he was also an, an active nationalist and an antisemite. Can we say that his opinions were his private domain and that his music is free of any nationalistic and anti-Semitic perspective? I wouldn't say so. The Meisterzinger, a true masterpiece, ends on quite a lyrical but also aggressive ode to German culture. And several scholars have shown that there are several anti-Semitic aspects in his operas, especially in the ring. And Musically, Parsifal is an absolute masterpiece, but the character of Parsifal is problematic. The image of the pure hero appearing from nowhere to save a society from its decadence is very close to the propaganda that opened the way to fascism in many countries. Is this the kind of hero that we need today? The fact that Wagner's fascinating operas had been so close to the Nazi regime is not a problem for many Wagnerians. Well, it was a huge problem for Wagner's grandsons, Wieland and Wolfgang, who, after the Second World War, understood the need of cleaning Bayreuth's festival from all these links to the Nazi regime. Wieland created then a new way of staging, more sober, very abstract, replacing naturalistic set by empty stage sculpted by light. He found a way to reveal new aspects of his grandfather's masterpieces. For the traditional Wagnerians of the time, this was a betrayal until it became a new reference. This shows the importance of staging and interpretation. A gifted creative stage director can reveal essential qualities of an opera focusing on what is universal and actual without changing one note or one word, then even an opera that could be seen as problematic becomes a source of enrichment. A very contrasting figure to Wagner, Mozart seems to be the composer who was the closest to the enlightenment spirit. His operas reveal a fundamental aspiration to freedom they announced the big social and political changes that would come soon with the French Revolution and change radically all European societies. The influence of the Enlightenment on Mozart operas seems to grow until his last operas, the Zauberflöte and La Clemenza di Tito. But for example, in the Zauberflöte, Zarastro speaks to Monostatos and treats him in a way that sounds today just an, unacceptable and almost dictatorial. Fortunately, it's less and less frequent to see a singer singing monostatos with black face, something that was common in Mozart's time, is not accepted anymore in our time. And there are solutions to maintain the essence of the work without altering it. In spite of their enlightened character, some of Mozart operas might be controversial in our time. Many people consider Così fan tutte as a misogynistic opera. This opinion might come from quite a superficial reading of the piece. It's true that Don Alfonso's point of view is misogynistic, but musicologist and dramaturg Lydia Bramani has shown in very detailed musical analysis how Mozart represents female and male characters through his very subtle music, avoiding any kind of misogyny. 
and some contemporary stage directors such as Michael Haneke or Christophe Honoré have chosen to stage the male characters in a much more critical way than Dorabella and Fior di Ligi. But even if Così Fan Tutte was a misogynistic opera, would that be sufficient not to play it? I strongly disagree. Human nature is not simply divided between good and bad people. It's the lesson of the greatest artist to show the incredible complexity of the human soul and behavior. Don Giovanni is another example. Under the light of Me Too, this opera might be regarded as an encouragement to domination and mistreatment of women by men and even to rape. Of course it's not. La Ponte and Mozart show here an archetype of a seducer, but in no way does it represent the apology of rape. You can adore this opera and hate or love the central character. It doesn't matter. In his essay, Testaments Betrayed, Milan Kundera wrote that the novel is a territory where moral judgment is suspended. And he wrote that suspending moral judgment is not the immorality of the novel, it is its morality. Isn't it exactly the same with opera? The Enführung aus dem Serai might become today a more problematic piece. On one hand, it does offer a wonderful example of tolerance between Muslims and Christians and an incredible act of forgiveness from Pasha Selim. On the other hand, it contains a number of cliches about Turkish civilization or Muslim religion, especially through the text and music of Osmin. If we are happy to welcome Muslims in our opera houses today, how can we avoid offending them knowing the actual awareness about some identity issues? I don't see here what can be recommended other than careful thought about the piece, its interpretation, a good preparation of the audience, and some critical or historical perspective in order to let them understand that we no longer share the perspective that were common during the 18th century. Art can certainly not be reduced to ideology, but it does contain a lot of ideological elements. Our culture, our understanding of the world, our values have been sculpted by those elements and they are not neutral. Is this a reason not to perform any more works that contain elements that can be seen today as problematic? It's therefore so important to see that the significance of an artwork is a process, a dynamic process that doesn't end with writing the piece. The meaning of an artwork is not entirely imprisoned in it. The meaning of the work will also depend on how we look at it, how we listen to it, how it resonates in ourselves. In the field of performing arts, performers can be singers, actors, conductors, stage directors. They will all add their own level of understanding and interpretation. This might lead to some dispute, but it can be a necessary and positive process. And that process also includes the audience. We are all invited to be active participants in the beauty and the meaning of any masterpiece. French author Daniel Salnave wrote, reading a book is finishing its writing. Reading a book is finishing its writing. If we take this proposal seriously, it obliges all of us, especially those who are in charge of our artistic institution, to a profound reflection about how we include the audience in any artistic process. Today, stage directors are often accused of betraying operas in their staging. But let's not forget that the revival of opera has been possible by the creative work of important stage directors from Wieland Wagner, Giorgio Streller, Klaus-Michael Gruber, Patrice Chéron, 
to Peter Sellers, Deborah Warner, Robert Lepage, William Kentridge, Dmitry Sterniakov, Katie Mitchell, and many others. Of course, not all new productions have been successful, but they have offered us new insights into the beauty and the meaning of masterpieces of the past. We need also to develop a critical attitude from the spectators. Opera is in danger in a world of consumerism. This is probably my biggest fear. Will we be able to resist this dangerous evolution or not? If we want to resist, we need to, de to develop new forms of active participation. We need to enlarge the audience to engage the spectators in a critical attitude towards the repertoire. We need to start a dialogue with communities that are today much too far from the opera world. A dialogue doesn't mean trying to convince new spectators about our values and convictions. It means starting a process made of listening, mutual understanding, acceptance of the cultural diversity present in our cities. <laughs> This might create profound changes in the life of opera. And this is a positive process, I think. It might also create tensions and reveal contradictions between aspirations of different groups and communities. We should not be too afraid of this process as far as we can develop this dialogue with mutual respect. If it happens that an opera is too problematic to be accepted by some communities, we should pay attention to their point of view, discuss with them, and maybe accept to suspend temporarily to program that opera. But this should be an exception, not a rule dictated by some fundamentalists. During the 20th century, freedom of expression has been systematically under pressure in totalitarian regimes. Let's avoid entering in a world where freedom of expression would be in danger because of the dictatorship of fundamentalists and the increasing pressure coming from manipulation through social networks. This 21st century sees the emergence of very important liberation movements who can play an active role in the positive evolution of our societies. We do need a strong and active feminist movement. We need a strong decolonial movement. We need to develop anti-racism in many forms. We also need new cultural forms that will echo and accompany those fights, as it was the case with new art forms at the Renaissance or during the 18th century or just after the Second World War. Within the opera sphere, I would therefore plead strongly for more room for creations inspired by these contemporary issues. But it would be a huge mistake to forget about the culture of the past or to rewrite it. Let me quote Milan Kundera again. Once, he said, all culture from the past will be completely rewritten and completely forgotten behind his rewriting. I so much hope this will not happen. Imagine just an instant when treasures in the field of literature, visual arts, theater, opera would disappear if we give, if we give priority to moral judgments instead of artistic judgments. In the opposite, I'm absolutely convinced we always will need Shakespeare, Molière, Chekhov, Monteverdi, Mozart, Wagner, and, Ver and Verdi to understand better the human nature and also to remember where we are coming from. The solution is certainly not in destroying that heritage. On the contrary, it should be in reading this heritage in a new way, in a critical way, and not forgetting that those art forms have been written in other times than ours. I'd like to summarize my conclusions in four points. One, no, opera doesn't need to be politically correct. 
we should not stop playing operas that can be controversial or even problematic. But let's be aware of the points of tension that exist in our societies and let's open broad discussions about them. If opera can feed some of those discussions, it's even better. Two, let's take the opera seriously. The process of interpretation should not stop questioning operas, addressing both the timelessness of the pieces and their historical or ideological background. Three, we need to develop radically and urgently the creative role of women and of artists coming from other cultures in order to make it a true universal art form. Let's make a much bigger place for contemporary opera that can echo some crucial actual issues. Four, a larger audience should be invited to discover the world of opera, to love it and to develop a critical attitude. Active spectators will make the shows better. Let's develop new forms of active participation. Let's open a vivid dialogue with communities about the signification of opera and their own perception. By having this kind of dialogue, let's prevent small groups of fundamentalists from imposing their views on art and let's resist censorship. I'm convinced that if we work seriously on those issues, we will find a way of resisting consumerism and be able to make opera a truly living art form that enriches our societies.